An investment strategy is something that all funds require and it's the document that sets out exactly what that particular fund can invest in. The investment strategy must be set up in accordance with particular rules in the legislation. Um, uh, and the four main things that it discusses is um, the risk associated with the investments that that fund is going into and the potential returns, uh, the diversity of those investments. So we're looking at um, the range of investments within the fund because having a range of investments can help to reduce risk. Then we're looking at um, the liquidity of those investments, so how quickly we can convert those investments back to cash if we need to. And finally, the ability of the fund to meet its liabilities. And by that I mean whether those investments um, will allow us to access capital um, quickly enough to pay things like fund expenses, to pay out member benefits, to pay out insurance benefits if someone um, is disabled or passes away. So the investment strategy would address all of those things and preferably be documented properly. The reason we need to document it is of course so that we've got something to reference against while we're making our investments and also as protection there in the law if we're ever queried about the kinds of investment strategies we're using. So. Um, with that in mind, of course, the members of the fund as trustees can establish their own investment strategy within a self-managed super fund, um, or they can go and get some advice and some assistance to set it up, which is what I would really recommend. So this is where personal financial advice becomes really important because we want the fund's investment strategy to really address the needs of those particular fund members. So having someone like PSK, for example, to help establish that investment strategy and set it all up for you can really um, just set up the fund then for you know, a lifetime of, of fund membership. In addition, uh, PSK could help you, of course, managing the ongoing investments. And there's also the support of a superannuation administrative service, something like Intelligent Super that we talked about, that can take care of the day-to-day -day, um, transactions and record keeping and reporting and that kind of thing. Uh, but what we're looking for here is some really um, strategic planning around that investment strategy. And that's why I mentioned personal advice. Um, what we don't want is some off-the-shelf investment strategy that's either far too wide and open that it wouldn't even stand up in the law where it says you can invest in anything um, and you can have a ratio of assets from 0 to 100% in every particular asset class. That just really doesn't cut it under the law. Um, or you don't want to be stuck in a position where you've bought something off the shelf and it's way too detailed and way too restrictive and it isn't serving the needs of the particular members in a fund. And that's where, for example, it might be all about accumulating capital growth, but you have members in the fund that are wanting to draw income. Okay, so um, by you know, ensuring that we have an appropriate investment strategy to the members, we can ensure that the fund runs at, at its most beneficial. Uh, and that's the whole reason we have a self-managed superannuation fund, is to be able to exercise that kind of control. So uh, if you get it right from the start, then you don't have those concerns later on that you might be in breach. Um, and you know, obviously consequences are quite severe in that instance. So it's all about setting it up right.